Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my Crime and Policing channel. In today's session we're going to be looking at Forensic Botany. Now that's the study of plants and plant materials in relation to investigations, criminal or otherwise. So when I say plant materials, we're looking pollen, seeds, leaves, wood. There's a lot going on in plants, let me tell you. Even plants know your secrets. And they can tell us a lot about those secrets. They can tell us where people have been, they can tell us if someone's been moved, they can tell us a lot. Let's look at pollen, for example. So pollen is released when male plants want to fertilize female plants. And they have little helpers like bees and stuff as well. But these plants poof out this pollen, poof, do you like it? <laughs> and it gets everywhere, like really absolutely everywhere. And it's very specific to region, uh, regions as well. It's regional. So I know if people get hay fever and stuff, they try and eat um, local honey to try and counteract that because of the pollen and stuff that's in it. Makes sense? Anyway, so yeah, pollen can get trapped in the fibres of your clothing, in your hair, on your scalp, everywhere. When we're looking at trace evidence, remember, every contact leaves a trace. And this pollen is virtually invisible to the naked eye. And like I said, it gets everywhere, it gets trapped in little bits of everything. If we find a victim, for instance, we might check the nasal passage and see where they've been, what they've breathed in, where the pollen's from. We'd also look at the clothes and see what's trapped in those fibres. And if it's unusual to that area, it's indicating that that person's been moved. So if we are looking at um, someone, we find a body in the middle of the woods in Barnsley, which is a town up north uh, in Yorkshire. They find a victim in Barnsley, but the pollen they find in them is from Scarborough, which is a coast like miles and miles away. They know that body's been moved, or they at least know that they've been there recently. That makes sense. So yeah, interesting fact, right? And it's not just pollen as well. So they're looking at leaves. And leaves don't just tell us if a tree is going to have conkers on it, which, you know, it's almost conker season, guys. So let's go conquering. They can tell us a lot about the plant and stuff as well. And just like humans, I mean, these are living things. Trees and plants are living things. They've got genetic codes too. And scientists can test these leaves to see where they've come from. Amazing, right? So... There's also forensic dendrochology, which is where you're looking at wood and, you know, like the rings in trees and things. It's fascinating, honestly. I wish I was as clever as a forensic botanist because I think they're really cool. If there's any forensic botanists watching this, by the way, please send me a message. I would love to have some case studies and stuff um, for my students, so thank you in advance. I'm going to look at a couple of cases which shows where forensic botany has helped secure convictions, which is obviously what is all about right getting justice for those victims and putting those dangerous offenders behind bars or worse you know for this guy anyway in 1932 bruno hortman kidnapped a baby a famous person's baby the Lindbergh baby and he demanded a huge ransom for the safe return of this child the ransom was paid but the child was not returned safely in fact the child was later found dead and uh, through blunt force trauma the investigators think the child might have died when they actually left with him, so he demanded the ransom knowing that child was not going to be going home. Anyway, what Hortman did is he made his own ladders, some homemade ladders to, to get in and commit this crime. And when investigators had a look at these ladders, they found the wood that matched that in Hortman's attic, which helped to secure, with other evidence as well, helped to secure conviction and a little tiny bit of justice for that family. He was electrocuted in New Jersey, in state prison, on an electric chair. But yeah, amazing, right? Just from some wood. Every line of inquiry helps. Every bit of evidence helps secure convictions. And we'll look at seeds and stuff as well. And in particular, there was a case in 1992. The victim was called Denise Johnson. She was a sex worker and she was found in the Arizona desert surrounded by these blue palo verde trees which it's like um it's in the pea family like a woody tree woody pea cousin and um they're really pretty actually i don't know if you've ever seen them and they've got little pods seed pods like pea pods seed pods and her body was found in an area of lots of these blue palo verde pods now then one of these trees got low hanging branches and they noticed that it got a fresh abrasion to the trunk it had been hit quite recently by something. There was a suspect, Mark Bredo, and when they spoke to him, he's like, yeah, I've, I've been with Denise, but I didn't kill her. 
because I'd never even been to the scene. Like, come on, guys, I paid for some services, got some services, didn't kill her. Well, Mark, what they found was that in his pickup truck, in the back of his pickup truck, was some of these pea pods. Interesting, right? So we think this car hit that tree, got some pods, finding himself at the scene right there, isn't he? Well, the in investigators, they got the assistance from an, a scientist called Tim Helen, I think it's Helen Jays or something. Helen Jays, I think, yeah. Anyway, Tim, we'll call him Tim. A forensic scientist, um, botanist called Tim. I think it's Helen Jays. Helen Jays? Anyway, and he did some tests on these pea pods, seed pods. And he was like, mate, I've checked the pods in this pickup truck. I've checked the pods from that tree. There is there is no, a very, very tiny, weeny little chance it's not the same tree, which obviously helps that investigation. And be like, well, Mark, this is what we found. Fascinating stuff, right? So yeah, even the plants are telling on you. That's how plants and plant parts can help us solve crimes. I hope that's interesting. Give us a, a like and a share. If you subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. And let me know what kind of things you want me to cover in the future. Thank you, bye.